Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. I've uh, gone back this week to the Mosquito. I was anxious to uh, get things finished up uh, because I've got another 132 scale project in the wings and I don't like leaving things undone. So uh, I've had a bit of a push this week. I haven't quite got there. It'll take another video just to finish the bits and pieces off uh, and do the final reveal of the model. Uh, but I'll do that in the next few days. So hopefully we're not too far off getting this one finished. This week I've worked on the underside to get the doors fitted on the undercarriage in the Bombay and Cannon Bay. Uh, I've got the flaps done and I've made a decision about the nacelles which I'll come to uh, later on in the video. I've made a start on the props as well, so everything really uh, to get things finished off. The model's also had a coat of varnish and uh, a bit more on that later on in the video. So I'm going to make a start with the Bombay door, so we'll get the camera sorted out and we'll make a start. Okay, not much time this week, so uh, I'll do what I can. I'm going to concentrate on the underside and... Uh, hopefully get the Bombay doors on and the Bombay finished, the undercarriage bay doors as well. Uh, I've also got the uh, nose plate to put on where the 20mm cannons uh, are exposed. Uh, and beyond that I've obviously got to come back to the top, do all the cowlings, uh, the cockpit canopy is the main thing and the last thing that I'll do. Uh, but to get the model to this stage, uh, I've done most of the weathering on it. So to get the top finish on the Mosquito, I've used uh, Alclad Clear Coat Light Sheen. This is a spirit based uh, varnish uh, and I think it leaves a really nice uh, finish, particularly on aircraft. I use it on all the scales of aircraft, 48, 72, when I occasionally do a 72 scale. And I just think it gives a really nice uh, finish on the model. It's not perfectly matte, as the name suggests, uh, but it's not at all glossy. So it's just a perfect uh, in-between balance. They also do uh, a varnish finish, Alclad also do a varnish finish called semi-matte. Uh, but that's just a shade matter than the light sheen. I prefer the light sheen. So that's gone on and the decals that I've used, which are the Barracuda stencils, have all settled down nicely. I've not got any uh, silvering at all. Uh, and that's particularly uh, good when you do these uh, keep off markings on a mosquito. They're probably the most difficult to avoid getting any silvering on them, but the Barracuda decals uh, have gone down really well. I'm really pleased with those. So we'll flip the model over but I just want to remove the canopy, put that somewhere safe. So I'm going to start this week with the Bombay doors and the Cannon Bay doors are integral. And I've weathered these uh, off the model, just applied a little bit of uh, smoke staining from the uh, ejector chutes with the 20mm cannons. So they can go on now and the reason why I'm putting them on at this stage is that I want to use them to secure these very delicate retraction arms uh, and hinges for these doors. Uh, I've been very careful not to damage them but I have actually loosened this one so the sooner I can get the doors on the better. Okay so I've just got a bit of medium CA on these. And hopefully that will secure the door. Just drop the flaps off, they're getting in the way a little bit. I'll uh, secure these later on in the video. But I'll just want to get this Bombay finish first. So 
So this is the side where I've just about broken the hinge. So hopefully we can get this on without doing any more damage. First thing I'll do is just secure that hinge onto the door. Okay, we've got another couple of hinges. There's uh, a retraction jack that goes at the back here and I've got a couple more to fit at the front. Uh, so we'll just do those next and then that's the Bombay finished off. We just need to drop the bombs in and then we're done. So they're actually very secure. The hinges are pretty strong once they're actually glued onto the doors. This is the uh, retraction jack at the back for the Bombay door. Now I might be able to get this in without any glue because it's a pretty uh, snug fit. You notice that the tweezers that I'm using here, I've just wrapped a little bit of masking tape around the ends and that just adds a bit of padding, it protects the parts from getting scratched. I'm not too keen on the plastic retraction rods. I think I might replace those with some nickel rod at some stage. But they're all right for now, it's holding the door nice and firm in place. So next I'm going to fit this plate which goes on the chin of the aircraft. And I've left this off because we have to fit the 20mm cannon barrels uh, in here on this plate. I did have some brass barrels but they weren't that much better if at all than the Tamiya plastic part. So I'll just use this uh, part from Tamiya. You can see that the muzzles of the cannon are just protruding from the troughs there. I'm just trying to remember the fit for this as it's a while since I've built it. problem with cotton gloves is they do get in the way so I'll just have to be careful not to touch the model. Okay that's safely in. So on to the undercarriage doors next. And uh, just something to bear in mind with these is that particularly when in flight they were in the line of the exhausts. So they need to be weathered consistently with the rest of the nacelle. So just a bit of exhaust soot on the top edge uh, where it would have caught. Otherwise, if you have perfectly clean undercarriage doors next to a dirt in a cell, they just don't look right. So it's just one of those areas where just uh, think through how the aeroplane would have weathered uh, just to get it all to match up and be consistent. So again, I'm going to use some super glue to get a nice strong bond with these. 
the connections that Tamiya provide are very positive so we shouldn't have any trouble getting these to fit famous last words Okay, onto the flaps now, and I've built mine in the down position. Just to add a bit of interest really to the finished model. The first thing to do is to get the flaps located into the nacelle, which is a bit tricky, they're slightly awkward, but they do go in. and then they hook down onto a bar that goes across the nacelle and once that's in position I'll just secure it with a bit of super glue just on the hinge so that's not going to move anywhere we've also got some hinges uh, one for each flap and you've got to take some care when you're putting these together. Tamiya provide a piece of photo etch to provide this little plate on it. And they're all different. All the parts are different. So you've just got to be really careful taking them off the sprues to get the right number. The other thing you've got to be careful of uh, when you're painting little parts like this, little detail parts that you're adding to the rest of the model, is to get the paint finish on them right and that might sound uh, a strange thing to say but it's very easy to get uh, parts in a slightly different colour even though you're using exactly the same pot of paint which I am here when I first uh, test fitted these hinges the medium sea grey looks completely different to the flaps and to the underside of the aeroplane and that was because I hadn't weathered them in the same way that I've weathered the rest of the aircraft so as soon as so they were basically just two grey and they stood out as being uh, additional parts that are just glued on rather than being uh, integral to the rest of the aeroplane and it's very easy at this stage of a build to get that sort of inconsistency in finish. So you can tell the parts that have been added right towards the end. And it does tend to stand out a little bit. So just be careful to get them all, to get these detail parts weathered in the same way as the rest of the build, if you can. Okay, so that's the flaps located. On the top surface we've got uh, a panel to fit at the back of the nacelle, which is this. Now Tamiya say that you can remove these, but to be absolutely honest, I don't see the point. You can see the hinge detail, I suppose, but I don't think it's worth having this part flapping around and falling off. So I'll uh, glue it into position permanently like that. Okay, so I've been thinking uh, for a while about how to display the two engines uh, in the Tamiya kit. You'll know that 
Tamir uh, have designed the kit so that they should be removable, the cowlings. But I think in practice it's very difficult to get them to stay. And if you can get them to stay, uh, it's even more difficult to get them to look convincing and to be uh, closed in the right sort of way. Nice and tight. It's very difficult to do that. So what I've decided to do is to uh, cement the majority of the cowlings in place on the starboard engine and I'll leave the uh, top cowling off so that's this piece I'll leave that detachable so you can see down into the engine but the actual side cowlings and the underside I'll glue in place uh, on the port side I'll put up with the occasional loss of the cowlings as they drop off. The magnets really just aren't strong enough I don't think to uh, get them to display properly. So that's the plan, one exposed and one partially closed up. But before we fit any of these cowlings we have to get the exhausts ready. And you'll remember if uh, you watched earlier episodes of the build that I used some brassing engines or I tried to use them I didn't get them to fit in the end but they came with a set of resin exhausts which are quite a bit better than the Tamiya exhausts so that's these parts here and obviously they need uh, assembling uh, there are two parts to these in the brassing set an outer shroud and the actual exhaust pipes themselves so these need to be painted up now and attached to the engines and all I've done with them after assembly is to give them a coat of matte black and then uh, various dry brushing with some uh, rust brown and some gun metal just to highlight the tips of the exhausts so they've come out uh, looking pretty well there's sort of a burnt iron colour and the way that I'm going to deal with the exhaust is you can see for the engine that I'm going to display I've fitted the exhaust uh, into the engine but for the starboard engine I'm going to attach the exhausts onto the inside of the side cowlings and the reason for that is that you get a nicer fit that way So that will just attach in there like so and and then we can glue the cowling onto the side of the uh, engine bearers. Now looking at these cowlings you'll notice this silver patch or this uh, metallic patch and this matches the shape of the shrouded exhausts. So you can see here this is the Tamiya shroud that is provided for a couple of the options in the kit but our particular option uh, has the uncovered exhausts but you can still see the metallic background where the shroud may have been at one point and Tamiya supplies some decals uh, for this uh, metallic area but I didn't think they were a great fit. I did try them but they didn't look very good. So the way I handled this was to paint the entire cowling in uh, a Mr Hobby colour. Uh, super fine silver. It gives a really nice metallic effect as you can see. And then I simply put the uh, shroud over the top and sprayed the grey around the outside just a little bit of masking on the exhaust exit at the back and at the front and that just completely sealed the area off and when we took the shroud away we've got the perfect shape of the metallic area that we want and then after that I place the cowling into position to do the exhaust staining which is just a mixture of blacks greys and a little bit of tan into the centre there and obviously placing it onto the nacelle means that you get a consistent exhaust gas mark all the way along the nacelle. So I'm pretty happy with those, they're nice and grubby. 
Uh, they've been obviously uh, had the effect of being removed quite a few times with oily dirty hands so they're ready to go on so as I said the first thing I'm going to do is to glue the exhaust into position so just a couple of tiny spots of CA I just want to tack this roughly into place. Now obviously I want a really firm fix in here. I don't want to lose these exhausts by pushing them back into the engine bay. All the way around. Just let that dry before we position it onto the aeroplane. Do the same for the other side. Using the brassing exhausts is uh, a bit more detailed, as I said, but I think if you were intending to try to repeatedly fit the cowlings on and off the model, as Tamiya intend, I think that would be a bit more difficult with the brassing exhaust because the cowlings don't fit quite as well as they do with the some of your exhaust parts so it's a little bit of a compromise really you're swapping detail for the ability to pop these cowlings on and off but actually the more I think about it the more I've come to the conclusion that the removable cowlings are a little bit gimmicky so once you've got this in a display cabinet I wonder how many times you would actually be taking them on and off. Not many I don't think. So they're nice and uh, secure now. I hope they're not going to pop away. And we can now get them onto the model. As I said I'm going to glue these in position as I am with the uh, underside cowling. We've got a little mesh to put on the front of this as well, which I'll do uh, before the end of the video. But I'll get it in position first. So I'm not going to go mad with the glue here. I just want to use the location points that Tamiya provide. Okay, so that's a much better fit when it's glued into position. I couldn't get it to fit like that with the magnets at least and at least keep them on. Uh, it's uh, very difficult. So I think that's a reasonable compromise. We can still see the top of the engine on this side if we want to but I'll leave the port engine exposed uh, with these cowlings. Now the other thing that I don't think I've mentioned before is that the brassing engine set also comes with a set of fully detailed cowlings uh, which are these and they've got a little bit more rib detail on the inside on the outside I don't think there's much difference between the two but uh, certainly the rib detail on the inside is a little bit better and the other thing that you get which you don't in the Tamiya is that the under cowling has a better detailed scoop arrangement as well for the supercharger. So I might at some stage when I come to display the model I might paint these uh, resin cowlings up uh, to put with the model. So the last thing I want to do uh, for this session is to build the propellers which is really the last major assembly uh, on the kit uh, apart from the canopy of course but I'll do that next time Tamiya give us two styles of propeller for the different versions ours has the narrow blade props you can see there's also some paddle ones provided
the spinners are different as well for the two options as are the back plates so uh, you just need to make sure you get the right parts from the kit just going back to the nacelles it's just occurred to me and I'd forgotten all about them but Tamiya provided at least in the kit that I got I'm not sure it was on uh, all the kits throughout the world but I got a set of clear cowlings as well so that would be an another option for displaying the model if you wanted to retain the shape of the aircraft but still be able to see into the engines they do need quite a bit of work on them though because they're not particularly clear this is the uh, top cowling for the starboard engine and they're sort of a translucent really so uh, tell me I advise you give these a coat of gloss varnish to sharpen them up a little bit but uh, I'm not sure how effective those would be I'm not going to be using them as always with propeller blades just make sure we get these mould seams off them okay and get the blades on We have uh, a poly cap, mustn't forget that because we'll want to uh, play with the propeller won't we? Spin it round. Just give the proper quick tidy up at the bottom where it uh, where we've attached it. Okay we'll get those painted. So I'm going to start with some primer and then coat the propellers with some uh, Mr. Hobby Superfine Silver and uh, I can mask them off and do the blades. Okay so this is the first stage for painting the props. So I just need to leave this to dry thoroughly now because I want to overcoat it with some black on the blades. Uh, and then I'll just wear the edges away just to reveal some of this silver so it's got to be really hard before I can do that. The spinners are done as well or at least they're in the raw paint so I've got to weather those they would be pretty dirty so I'll weather those down to the same sort of level as the airframe you can see they're far too clean at the moment so uh, that's as much as I can do really for today. I've got to be patient and leave these uh, for a day or so to sort out. And then we'll come back and finish them off next time. Okay, so unfortunately I'm going to have to leave it there for today. I've got the video to edit for this evening. So I'm not going to be able to finish these bits and pieces off. But I'll work on the model of the weekend and hopefully... Uh, I will get it finished uh, in the next day or two. Really the work I've got left to do is to sort the canopy out. I've got the rest of the transparencies to fit which are the landing lights, the navigation lights and there's some uh, beacons on the, other, on the underside as well so I'll get those done. Just the bombs to fit and the racks and of course to uh, finish these propellers off. But that shouldn't take too long. Another day's work I should think will get this finished and then I can think about the next project and bringing that to the bench uh, for the next 132 scale build. So I'm going to carry on get this finished up and I'll bring you another video uh, hopefully early next week uh, with those last few bits and pieces and a final look at the completed model. So after 20 episodes we'll all be done and uh, hopefully you'll be able to join me for that one uh, in the next day or two. In the meantime, everybody, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time for the finish of the Mosquito.
Thank <laughs> you.